Hey folks, just a quick note for anyone who may be in the Central Florida area this weekend, uh, May 18th, 2013. This Saturday there is a record show in Tampa, Florida uh, that I plan on attending. I haven't been able to get to a record show this year yet and I'm itching to go. So I think this weekend is going to be the weekend. So I just wanted to get the word out that I'm going to be there. If anyone happens to be going, uh, be sure to say hi if you see me and uh, look forward to meeting anybody who might show up. So the uh, address, it's at a Holiday Inn Express, 4732 North Dale Mabry Avenue, Tampa, Florida. Uh, doors open at eight o'clock. Early entry is, uh, I believe it's $12, $11, $12 for early entry. 10 o'clock is general admission at four, for $4. So I, I'll probably be there around 10, maybe a little bit after. It's a two hour drive for me, I'm not getting up. So I'm not gonna get up that early. So I uh, hope to see you there. Let's get into it. Hello friends, music lovers. Welcome to episode 43 of the Vinyl Survivor. This is where I pull five records from my inbox, uh, which is all my recently purchased music, and pull five albums out, clean them up, give them a listen, and decide whether they are something I want to have in my collection or not. So let's go ahead and get into this first album here. This actually is a compilation album from Earl Clue. This is called Keynotes from 1985. Pretty basic uh, release here. And overall, this is not a recommended Earl Clue album. This is, um, this is sort of that instrumental 80s jazz with this sort of vocals on it I guess you could say they're not really lyrics they're more of the, you know the the do 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 kind of stuff vocal sounds that are uh, kind of cheesy in my opinion uh, it's kind of weird Oral Clue has albums I really enjoy and then stuff like this that's just I guess really commercial and just not 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 to my liking at all this is from 1985, so it's on a uh, Rainbow Capital label. So yeah, it's Earl Clue's Keynotes. I think probably the most recognizable song on here is probably Central Park, at least for me. That was one I remember hearing a lot. Down in Central Park. It's, it's that. Uh, a lot of similar stuff to that, and just not to my liking at all. So this one is not going to be going in the collection. So that's... That's one down, Earl Clue Keynotes. All right, the second album we have up on the chopping block. This is the latest album. There's a new release. This is the latest album from The Flaming Lips. This is called The Terror, uh, released just this year, just uh, last month. And this is their, their latest album, follow-up to 2009's Embryonic. And yeah, this is... Uh, there's, the, there's the inner inner gatefold there and this is co more continuation of sort of that embryonic sound very fuzzy very heavily heavily processed uh, electronic sort of manipulation of, of the guitars and whatnot and a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of studio work as far as you know manipulating things and really cool in my opinion I first discovered the flaming lips around the embryonic period and that was sort of what got me into the band was really the, how much how much manipulation to the sound was done and how it was just very sort of psychedelic modern sounds very gritty very uh, almost like an urban sort of hard music I really enjoy it and I, I definitely ha am enjoying listening to this one and sort of the, the description of the, the sort of the concept of this album is uh, this is Wayne Coyne saying this we wanted we want or wanted to believe that without love we would disappear that love somehow would save us that yeah if we have love give love and no love we are truly alive and if there is no love there would be no life the terror is we know that even without love life goes on we just go on there is no mercy killing so yeah kind of a, a you know without love what are we uh, kind of thought there and we get some inner sleeves with lyrics on them 
This is a 2LP set on black vinyl. I did not get the uh, limited silver edition of this. I uh, would have liked to have gotten that. Flaming Lips usually has dead wax. Um, yeah. This is no different. Uh, side A, we say it says, uh, however love can help you. And then side B says, we are all standing alone. And here is the insert from the second LP. Very similar to the first one. And side C, it says, the terror's in our head. And side D is, we don't control the controls. So yeah, the new album from the Flaming Lips. I I love it personally. If if you liked Embryonic, I would think you would probably like this as well. If you didn't like Embryonic, you probably won't like this either. It's it's along the same lines. Yeah, I, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Yeah, I guess that's about all I have to say about it. This is definitely going in the collection. Okay, next up we have actually another album from Earl Clue. This is called Late Night Guitar, released in 1980. And this one actually differs from the one I showed previously in the way that uh, this one is sort of solo guitar with instrumentation and the, the the compilation I showed earlier was sort of solo guitar with just vocals and I much prefer this with instrumentation I know a lot of people don't care for instrumentation but I think overall this is really really a much better sounding piece of work uh, really emotional really nice enjoyable sounds it would be great um, great sort of Sunday morning kind of music just really chill uh, really lush sounding has a very sort of uh, almost I guess Italian kind of sound and this is on the Liberty label and yeah as I said I I thoroughly enjoy this I'm not you know it's kind of weird I'm, not, I'm getting rid of one of the Earl clues in this this series but in this episode but this one is gonna be staying in the collection really enjoyed it definitely be replaying this again it'd be uh, really nice to play at a dinner party or just on a Sunday morning when I just want to relax and maybe read or just enjoy looking out the window at what's going on in the yard. Uh, really nice music, so definitely recommend this one. You know, it's you know dollar bin kind of record here. You know, don't spend don't spend money on this, but uh, if you see it in a thrift store, dollar bin, pick it up, give it a try. Okay, next up we got a piece of uh, VCLT here. This one came from LJ, and I finally got around to cleaning it up, giving it a listen. This is Cheap Trick at Budokan from 1978. Of course, this is their, one of their most famous albums, live concert from Japan. Cool gatefold there. As well, you get a booklet. photos and stuff so that's really neat and yeah just a classic classic uh, classic live recording probably one of their best known albums in general you got uh, I want you to want me and surrender on here probably the two most well-known tracks really good really fun this particular copy is on the orange epic label and yeah I'm not not the biggest fan of the power pop course kind of thing, but I mean, this is this is a really well known one, really accessible, really fun. Uh, there was a reason it was a big big hit because it's just uh, an enjoyable enjoyable live recording, and it's uh, I enjoyed it as well. And I'm going to be adding this to my collection. So thank you, LJ, for sending this to me. Uh, really awesome to. To finally get this, for some reason I was just having a really hard time finding it myself, and I'm glad you could help me out with that. Alright, and the last album we have up today is a an album from a newcomer to the hip-hop scene. Released his, This is his second studio album released last year. This is Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid, Mad City, a short film by Kendrick Lamar. Uh, and this is this is sort of tells the story of him growing up in Compton, dealing with the the different struggles of growing up as a as a young man in in that kind of in that kind of situation where you're being pressured to do 
not so good things and you know he's, he he has this internal struggle of wanting to be a good a good person but yet also this this outside influences of, of people wanting him to do, to do not so good things and it sort of tells the story of of him going through all those sort of things and it's uh, I think it's an excellent excellent album this is my favorite hip hop album of last year uh, definitely really great produced by Dr. Dre and Dr. Dre really found a really good um, a really good sort of sound for this album he's still he's still got it definitely and this just has sort of some custom black labels aftermath records and yeah this this album just really impressed me last year uh, you know on the surface it could seem like maybe it's just another sort of gangsta rap kind of thing but yeah he's really saying something here and it's really uh, an interesting piece of work and I'm really glad uh, to own this now finally have a, a, a vinyl copy of this for my collection really really good stuff uh, definitely recommend people check this out and really give it a serious listen don't just you know don't just put it on as background music really really listen to this it's 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 really good so that was a uh, another episode of the vinyl survivor i want to thank you all for tuning in we'll see you again real soon don't forget to comment and subscribe and we'll see you again soon cheers